Today we're going to begin soldering our circuits. When you go to your assigned station, the first thing you want to do is take your iron, clean it with some steel wool, then let it reach operating temperature. That may take three to four minutes. Once it's reached operating temperature, take some of the solder and apply a tiny bit to the end of the iron. This process is called tinning. The excess you can tap on the plate of your soldering iron stand to remove. Remember that one of the most common mistakes in soldering is using too much solder. It only takes a small amount to get the job done. Next thing you want to do is take the battery holder provided in your tray and flip it upside down. Use some masking tape and apply several strips to hold it down in the middle of your workspace. The battery holder will serve as a stand, holding your circuit board in place as you do your soldering. Now I will be doing a solder check eventually. Today I'm going to do an installation check. I'm going to check and make sure that at least the most important parts are in the right place. Remember, you can't make any mistakes. If any part is in the wrong location, your circuit will not function properly. But the key things that I'll be looking for that you might want to look for before you begin soldering is uh, the diodes, the Zener diodes here. Make sure that the black band is located on the left. As you hold the circuit board with the pointy end to the right, the black band should be on the left. Make sure that all four transistors are 7,000, it should say 7,000, and the flat side should be facing to the right. The center wire should be uh, the one towards the back. All four of these switching transistors should say 7,000, and they should not be inserted all the way. This is not a transistor, but actually an IC, and should say LM on it. The IC above it should have the notch at the top, and should be all the way down as far as it can go on the board. It will still leave a little space. The pins won't allow it to go in all the way. You also want to check the LEDs. Make sure that when they're in place, before you begin soldering any of the LEDs, that they overlap the edge, as you can see with these first two. It may be necessary to even hold it in place when you do your first solder joint. To begin, you may take your circuit board and flip it upside down. It's just going to rest on this temporarily on the ends of the bolts. Remember to hold your soldering iron like you would a pencil at a 45 degree angle with a cord on the outside of your wrist. With a piece of solder in hand, Begin soldering on one end and work your way to the opposite side. It typically is best to do every connection that you see with a wire going through it. Some of them will not have wires coming through. Do every connection you see and work your way across the board. If wires overlap, if a wire covers another connection, move it aside when you do that connection. So you can see it's very quick and easy. I can hold the iron on there. 1001, 1002, 1003, solder flows in, fills the gap nicely. 1001, 1002, 1003, and it fills it right in. Do not put the solder directly on the tip. 1001, 1002, 1003. Once you get the pattern down, you can begin soldering fairly rapidly. You'll have plenty of time, so please do not rush this process. When you get to connections like the IC or the transistors, you'll notice that the wires are very close to one another and it's easy to connect them all together as one. To avoid that, reposition yourself. You can move around, uh, hit the uh, connection from a different angle with your soldering iron. That will help avoid letting the solder flow to all of them. Also, check your iron periodically, tap it, to remove any extra solder. Too much solder also results in 
uh, joints that flow into the nearby joints. We want to avoid that. Remember, our rule for soldering is you want to heat the entire joint. That's the wire and the donut. If you don't heat it properly or it doesn't cool properly and the wire moves, you'll get a cold solder joint. All that you need to do is to reheat it and you should have a, a proper joint. Now here's an example of where the wire is in my way. All I do is just bend that to the side. Any wires that are in my way, I bend out of the way for right now so I can complete this joint. Getting a little too much solder on there, so I tap it off. Okay, so you should have the idea. Again, you want to work from one side of the board to the opposite side, doing every joint you see. When you are completed, when you have completed this portion, you will be bringing it to me for a solder check, and I'll be looking for nice, smooth mounds, making sure that all the connections are separate, and I'll also check and make sure that parts have not begun to fall out on the other side, so make sure they stay in their position. If you install them correctly, they shouldn't back out. The ones to be most careful with are the LEDs. Good luck.